Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the GCSE further maths topic of solving quadratics by factorization. Now, actually, if you look through the specification for GCSE further maths and you look at the core math section, solving quadratics by factorization isn't actually mentioned on its own. However, it's used in other topics. So, for instance, if you're sketching a quadratic graph and you want to find where that quadratic crosses the x-axis, you would let y equal zero. So you'd end up with an equation like this that ideally you would factorize and solve it and find the locations of where that quadratic crosses the x-axis. It might be in a mechanics question where perhaps you might have t squared minus four times t plus one equals zero or something like that, or something actually that would factorize. And you would factorize that and solve it and you'd find the duration of a journey, you'd find time. So it's useful to be able to solve quadratics by factorization. Now this is is on the GCSE Maths course, so you should actually be able to solve quadratics by factorization already. So this is a bit of a recap. So let's have a look at our first question. Our first question says solve x squared minus 2x minus 24 equals 0. So to solve a quadratic like this, ideally you would want everything on one side and then we'd have the equal 0 on the other. So as you can see here, we've got x squared minus 2x minus 24 on one side and then we've got our equal 0 on the other side. So that's fantastic. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try and factorize this left hand side. So if you need to recap on factorizing quadratics, if you go to corporate maths and go to video number 117, there's a useful video there, and 118 as well. So watch those two videos, they'll be quite useful for you. So if we wanted to factorize this, because it's just x squared or 1x squared, we're going to open up our brackets and we're going to put x's at the front of both brackets. So an x here and an x here. Now to find the numbers to go inside the brackets, we're now going to look at this thing on the end, this minus 24 on the end, this plus c. Remember, quadratics in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where we've got an x squared term, and it's got a coefficient of a. We might have an x term, and it would have a coefficient of b, and then we may have a constant on the end, c. So we're going to look at the plus c here, the constant on the end, this minus 24. And we're going to find two numbers that times together to be minus 24, and that add together to be the b here, the minus 2. So we want to find two numbers that would multiply together to be minus 24 and add together to be negative 2. So that would be negative 6 and 4 because negative 6 times 4 is negative 24 and negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. So we're going to put those in the brackets so it's going to be x minus 6 in one bracket and x plus 4 in the other bracket and then equal 0 and these two brackets will times together to be 0. So that's great. So we've factorized the left hand side of that equation. Now what we want to do is we want to figure out when each bracket would be equal to zero. Because if we have two things that multiply together to be zero, that means that either one of them would be equal to zero. So either here, x would be equal to six. So x equals six, because six take away six is equal to zero. So that's the value of x that would make that bracket zero, six. And in terms of this bracket, you have that x equals, well, negative four plus four is equal to zero. So x would be negative four. So there are two solutions, that x equals six or x equals negative four. So you might write here x equals six or x equals negative four. Some people like to write x equals six and x equals negative four. It's really up to you. But in terms of the solutions, it would be six and negative four. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question we've been asked to solve, 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 equals 0. So again, here we've got a quadratic on the left-hand side and it equals 0. So we've got this quadratic equation and it equals 0, which is fantastic. So we're going to now try to factorize the left-hand side of this equation. So we've got 2x squared. So I'm going to open up our brackets and I'm going to put 2x in one bracket and x in another bracket because 2x times x is 2x squared. Now, to find the numbers that go in the brackets, we want to find two numbers that will times together to be negative 4. So we want to think of two numbers that will times together to be negative 4. Now, in this case, because it isn't just x and x, we've got 2x and x, what we need then need to do is we need to then expand the brackets. And we can do that in our head and figure out which numbers would go where to make sure that we get the minus 7x in the middle whenever we expand it. Some people use a technique called the split in the middle technique, and that's totally fine as well. And if you use that technique, you would use that to factorize the left-hand side, as we're doing anyway by inspection. Okay, so we want two numbers that will times together to be negative 4, and when we put them in the brackets and expand, we get our minus 7x in the middle here. So I'm thinking that if we put our 4 here, so minus 4 there and a plus 1 there, because 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. And when we expand these brackets, let's see what we get. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times minus 4 would be minus 8x. Then we've got 1 times x, which is 1x. And if we have minus 8x plus 1x, it's going to go back up to minus 7x. That's fantastic. And then finally, 1 times minus 4. And 1 times minus 4 is negative 4. So that's it. So we've factorized that at a quadratic, which is fantastic. And it still equals 0. So it still equals 0. So that's great. So we want to factorize that quadratic on the left-hand side, and we've done that. And if you use the split-in-the-middle technique to factorize it, that's totally fine as well. In this video, I'm just going to focus on inspection, but if you use the split-in-the-middle technique to factorize it, that's great. 
Now we want to solve this equation, so we want to find when each bracket will be equal to zero. I'm going to start off with this bracket actually, because it's a bit easier to find the solution to that one straight away. If we want this bracket to be equal to zero, x will be equal to four, because if x is equal to four, we get four, take away four, and that's equal to zero. So that's that solution. Now let's have a look at this solution. Now when we've got 2x plus 1, I like to, whenever it's something apart from just x, I like to put it equal to 0. I like to write a little equation. So I'm going to write 2x plus 1, what's in the bracket, equals 0. And then I should solve that. So if we take 1 away from both sides, we get 2x equals negative 1. And then if we divide by 2, we're going to get that x is equal to negative 1 half. So there are two solutions, that x equals negative 1 half, or, or and, depends what you want to write there, x equals 4. And there are two solutions, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another example. So next question, we've been asked to solve 25x squared minus 9 equals 0. Now this one looks a little bit different than the ones we've looked at so far, because the ones we've looked at so far have had an ax squared plus bx plus c. They've had an x squared term, an x term, and then a constant. Whereas this one, if we look at it, it's got an x squared term and a constant. It doesn't have the x term. And this is a special type of factorization. Do you remember the difference between two squares? If you think back to GCSE maths, if you've got a something squared, subtract something squared, you can then factorize it. You can use the difference between two squares. And that's video number 120 in corporate maths. So if you watch video 120, that'd be really, really useful for you. Okay, so if we wanted to factorize this left-hand side, we're going to use the difference between two squares to do that. So we're going to put our brackets down. So bracket, 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 bracket. And it's still equals zero on the right-hand side. So that's great. Okay, so now 25x squared. Well, that's something squared because 25 is a squared number and x squared, well, that's x squared. So if we square root that, we're going to get 5x. So we're going to write 5x in both brackets. So 5x and 5x. And 5x times 5x is 25x squared. So that's fantastic. Then we've got the takeaway. That's the difference between two squares, the difference there. And then we've got 9. And again, we can square root that. The square root of 9 is 3. So we're going to write 3 and 3. And then with the difference between two squares, we put a plus sign in one bracket and a minus sign in the other. And then if we were to expand those brackets, let's just check it. 5x times 5x is 25x squared. 5x times minus 3 would be minus 15x. 3 times 5x is 15x, and that minus 15x, and the 15x will add together to be 0. And then we've got 3 times minus 3, and 3 times minus 3 is minus 9, so that's fantastic. So we've factorised that using the difference between two squares. And remember, video 120 in corporate maths would be really useful for that. Okay, now we want to solve this, so we're just going to let each bracket equal 0. And because it's 5x plus 3 and 5x minus 3, because we've got a 5x rather than just an x, I'm going to write them as little equations. I'm going to write 5x plus 3 equals 0 for this one, and 5x minus 3 equals 0 for that one. Okay, so for this equation, I'm going to take 3 away from both sides, so that'll give us 5x equals negative 3. And if we divide by 5, we're going to get the x equals minus 3 fifths. And then this one, you can probably guess you're going to get 3 fifths. If we add 3 to both sides, we're going to get 5x equals 3. And then if we divide by 5, we're going to get the x equals 3 fifths. So there are two solutions, the x equals negative 3 fifths, or, or you could write and, x equals 3 fifths. And that's it. So there are two solutions. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. So our last question, we've been asked to solve 6x squared plus 18x plus 12 equals x plus 2. So here we've got an equation, but this time it doesn't equal 0. So we're going to want to make one side of the equation equal 0. And whenever I'm choosing what side of the equation to equal 0, I have a look at the x squared term. And I want the x squared term to definitely be positive whenever I'm factorizing, ideally. You know, it just makes it a bit easier. So here it's positive on the left-hand side, so I just want to keep it there. I don't want to obviously make this left-hand side equal 0 because that's positive there, and I think that's much easier to factorize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take x away from both sides of the equation, and I'm going to take 2 away from both sides of the equation. So if we take away x from both sides, of the equation, we're going to get 6x squared plus 17x plus 12 equals 2, just taking away an x from both sides of the equation. And now let's take away 2. So if we take away 2 from both sides of the equation, we'll get 6x squared plus 17x plus 10 equals 0. That's fantastic. So we've got it equals 0, and now we just need to factorize it. So again, when we're factorizing something like this, we could use the split in the middle technique. And if you want to use that, feel free to. And there's a video on Corbin Maths on the split in the middle technique. In this video, I'm going to use inspection. So I'm going to put, open up my bracket. So bracket, 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 bracket equals 0. Now, with this being 6x squared, we could either have 6x and x or 3x and 2x. Now, I'm going to try 6x and x and see if we can figure out what numbers we would put in the brackets over times to give it to be 10. And then whenever we expand the brackets, we get the 17x in the middle that we want. But if I couldn't find an option that would work, I would then change it to 3x and 2x. And then figure the numbers over times to give it to be 10. That when we put them in the brackets and expand it, that we get the 17x in the middle. Okay, so let's try 6x and x to begin with. 
Now, whenever we put our numbers in the brackets, we want to put the numbers in the brackets so that the two numbers will times together to be 10. And then whenever we expand the brackets, we get our 17x here in the middle. So I'm thinking two and five. I'm thinking if I put a two there and a five there, and they're both going to be plus. And let's just check that. 6x times x is 6x squared. 6x times 2 would be equal to 12x. And then we've got our 5x, and 12x plus 5x is 17x, which is fantastic. And then we've got 5 times 2, and 5 times 2 is equal to 10. Now, sometimes what I find is whenever you start learning to do factorization, and whenever you do questions like this, it can be quite useful to work in pencil, so that whenever you write your 6x plus 5 and your x plus 2, if they weren't right, then what you could do is actually just rub them out and then put new numbers in. It can just help you out a bit whenever you're factorizing, and especially whenever you're just learning how to factorize quadratics like this. But as you get quite good at them, a bit like myself here, I was able to factorize that quite quickly. And the key to it really is practice. The more quadratics that you factorize, you'll be able to factorize them quite easily. Alternatively, remember, you can use the split in the middle technique and that would be fine as well okay so here we've got our two brackets this bracket well x would be equal to negative 2 that's quite straightforward and here we've got 6x plus 5 equals 0 just put in the bracket equal to 0 and then if we take away 5 from both sides of the equation we get the 6x equals negative 5 and then if we divide by 6 we get x is equal to negative 5 6 and that's it so that means that x equals negative 5 6 or x equals negative 2 and there are solutions and that's it. So in this video, we've looked at the GCSE Further Maths topic of solving quadratics, and we've looked at solving quadratics using factorization. And this uh, will be quite useful for other topics, such as sketching quadratic graphs, where we may need to factorize and solve it to find where it crosses the x-axis, or even whenever we're dealing with questions in mechanics. And that's it. So I really hope you find this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you know anyone that's studying for GCSE Further Maths, or perhaps even your teacher, please recommend the Corporate Maths resources to them as well, and they might find them useful as well. And that's it. So thank you. Cheers. Bye.